What's up, everyone? We're going to do something a little bit different this week, and instead of just looking at one prospect, we're going to look at two prospects and compare them directly to each other. Of course, referring to the video title of Jalen Smith out of Notre Dame and Reggie Ragland out of Alabama. Both of them linebackers, both of them very highly touted All-Americans, but in terms of their roles and skill sets, they could not possibly be more different football players. And I want to highlight that because what people seem to forget when they project linebackers to be drafted at certain spots is that not all linebackers are created equal. Not all of them fit every single team. And to be perfectly honest, it's extremely rare for a linebacker to be a perfect fit for more than a handful of different schemes anyway. You've got true three down, do it all, Mike linebackers like Luke Keekley. You've got pass rushing Sam backers like Von Miller or Justin Houston or Anthony Barr. You've got undersized speedy Will linebackers like Levante David or Telvin Smith. You've got downhill thumpers like Brandon Spikes or Steven Tullock. All of these guys are linebackers, but they all do completely different things, and some of them probably wouldn't be nearly the same player if they were put into a scheme or position that didn't fit their skill set. So when I look at Jalen Smith and Reggie Ravin, I'm not necessarily projecting them as great linebackers for every single team or every single situation. But for certain clubs, they're going to be way more highly valued than others. When you look at Smith in particular, he's about as good of a will linebacker prospect as you will ever see. What Luke Keekley was to middle linebacker prospects, Jalen Smith is to weak side linebackers. For his size, which he played at around 240 last year at Notre Dame, at 240, his speed is simply unreal. Someone that size should not be able to move like he does. It should not be possible. He is, quite frankly, the kind of athlete that violates the laws of physics. At 6'3", 240, he could probably play strong safety for a bunch of teams and be really, really good at it. Smith's main value to the Notre Dame defense was using that athletic ability to shut down speed to the edge. When he was on the field, nobody was going to get the corner. He was simply too fast and too quick, and nobody could outrun him. If I'm a defensive coordinator and my pursuit speed is lacking as a team or as a unit, and I don't have anybody that can scrape over the top of the trash fast enough to meet a ball carrier in a cutback lane, Smith's my guy. If I don't have any linebackers that are athletic enough to handle scrambling quarterbacks in space, Smith is my guy. If I need someone twitchy enough to handle both the ball carrier and the pitch man against option plays in space, again, Smith is my guy. Most importantly though, if I need a linebacker that can flat out smother people in coverage, Smith is my guy. It didn't matter if it was zone, man, or anything in between, Jalen Smith is one of the, if not the stickiest linebacker in coverage that I have ever seen. He's up there with Ryan Shazier, with Navarro Bowman, with Miles Jack in this very same draft class, if not better than all of those guys. If you are a defense that has trouble with pass catching running backs like Theo Riddick or Gio Bernard or Darren Sproles in space, Smith is a rare breed of athlete that can completely erase them from a game plan. He is that gifted. Notre Dame even put him in man coverage on slot receivers from time to time simply because they could. And when you look at him stack effortlessly on top of a break, flipping his hips like a cornerback or sticking to a wide out all the way downfield, this dude is 240 pounds and he's moving like that. His hips are smoother than a lot of DBs, and he's a linebacker. I cannot emphasize enough how rare that is. If you don't have anyone that can cover Jordan Reed on your team, if you can't cover Tyler Eifert, if you can't cover Danny Woodhead, this is your linebacker. These are some of the biggest matchup problems in modern NFL offenses, and Smith is one of the few prospects that's come out in the last few years, if not longer than that, who can take them away. That is why he's a blue chip prospect, assuming that his knee injury checks out okay. That being said though, he is not a perfect prospect. He does have weaknesses. The biggest one being offenses that will try to grind away at him with inside runs. He's not the kind of backer that's gonna stack on a guard, shed him, and bring down a ball carry at the line of scrimmage. That's not his game. 
Now, I'm not saying he's weak at the point of attack or anything, considering he did flash strength every now and then when he got under people's pads with good leverage. But he's just not a consistent downhill thumping presence, and if teams run right at him, eventually he's probably going to be exposed. He just simply was not built to hold up against big, powerful linemen at the college level, let alone at the NFL level, which had a playing weight of roughly 240 pounds. That's kind of to be expected. Whatever team drafts him is going to have to surround him with personnel that can protect him from that weakness. Have a strong interior defensive line that can get off blocks and demand double teams. Have a physical downhill Mike linebacker that can plug gaps, win the line of scrimmage, and most importantly, put himself in position to cover for Smith if and when a pulling guard drives him back five yards on a power run. He needs to be kept clean, but when he is clean and everyone else is absorbing all of that attention, he can make plays that nobody else could dream of making. Some teams will have no problem with fitting him into that role as the cleanup crew, while some other teams might prefer all their linebackers to be more well-rounded. Again, his value is going to be all over the place depending on scheme for different teams because his skill set's so unique. Now, when you look at Raglan, he's another highly regarded linebacker prospect, but he's essentially the anti-Jalen Smith. He's shorter, he's 20 pounds heavier, he can't cover anyone if his life depended on it, but he does something that Smith doesn't, and that's completely obliterate the inside run game. As a 260-pound boulder of a human being, Raglan's biggest value is going to be for a team that just wants to get nasty in the middle of their defense. They want to get someone tough, someone smart, someone who will go blow for blow for four straight quarters against offenses that want to grind you down. Smith excels in third and long situations, we showed that, but Raglan's the type of guy that can get you to those third and long situations in the first place with his ability to bang around with offensive linemen and shut down the run. However, just like Smith needs to be protected from the power run game, Raglan needs to be protected too from the very thing that Smith excels in taking away, speed. I am recording this before the combine, so we don't have Raglan's official 40 yet as of this moment, but based on tape alone, I don't think the combine's gonna be his friend. He looks on tape like he runs somewhere in the high 4.7 to 4.8 range at best, assuming he keeps all 260 pounds on that frame. Keep in mind, Smith runs probably in the 4.4s. If he drops weight, maybe he runs faster, but then you'd have to compromise a bit with his run stopping ability, so I'm not sure if that's really worth it for him. The only time I really saw Raglan have any success in space was when he was using angles in pursuit to his advantage. And to his credit, he really knows how to use those pursuit angles to kind of make up for his deficiency in athleticism, but that's only going to get you so far in the NFL. At some point when you're going up against professional athletes, slow is just slow, and there's nothing you can do to hide it. Now, where his speed deficiency really shows up is in coverage. He cannot move well enough to handle NFL caliber tight ends or running backs in space. He just can't do it. Alabama's scheme used a few different zone and man concepts depending on the situation and the offensive alignment, the most prominent of which is what I call pattern matching or match zones. A match zone is different than a normal spot drop zone, which is what Jalen Smith mostly employed. Rather than just dropping to a certain area and reading a quarterback's eyes, you are actively carrying receivers from seam to seam or in some cases sticking with them through the duration of the route. And from the very start of the play, you're quite literally matching the pattern of whoever comes into your assigned area. So for instance, on this play, you've got three receivers from Clemson all to the left. The Z receiver is way outside the hashes while the tight end and the slot receiver are stacked up inside. Those kinds of stacks are killer on man coverage because of all the different rubs you can do to get receivers free. So Bama employs pattern matching here to counteract that. No matter who it is, receiver, tight end, anyone, whatever, whoever releases underneath and to the inside, that's Raglan's assignment. Whoever releases outside is covered by the DB. Assuming one of them releases past 10 yards, they get bracketed by the safety. It's a three on two triangle here, but none of them know who is covering who yet because that assignment is determined by the release. That's pattern matching, and that's why I don't think Raglan can cover. Teams knew it was easy to get him matched up with favorable receivers over the middle because they knew he was just going to match whoever's pattern was going into his area. And when they did match him up, he was routinely torched. Renfro, Clemson's slot receiver here, immediately crossed his face because of Raglan's speed deficiency and turned this from a potential third and very long situation 
to a third and very manageable. A lot of NFL teams use match zone concepts because it provides a lot of benefits of man coverage without the vulnerability to rub routes. And if he can't do that, then he won't be nearly as high on their board. Meanwhile, you look at Smith and he was shutting down wide receivers over the middle on a regular basis because nobody was fast enough to run away from him. If you need Raglan to drop to a spot in a zone, he might be able to at least take a throwing lane away. But in match zone concepts or man coverage concepts, he is a massive liability. So much so that Alabama didn't even leave him on the field in obvious passing situations because they knew he was their biggest weakness in coverage. They elected to leave the other linebacker, Reuben Foster, in the game, but replaced Raglan. That concerns the hell out of me when I see him being mocked into the top 15 picks because I can't remember the last time a linebacker was taken that high that was only a two down player even on his own college team. In fact, the only three linebackers to be taken in the top 15 in the last six years combined were Ryan Shazier, Luke Keekley, and Rolando McClain. All of them had between average to great coverage ability in college, with Shazier obviously being the best of all three in that area. So at least they were all three down players. Raglan, however, can't cover at all, and people think he's going to be a top 15 pick. Hell no. Not for me, at least, if I was running a team. I cannot justify that. Raglan does a bunch of things well. He makes calls on the field for the Alabama defense. He shuts down the inside run game. And as far as instincts and discipline go, he's noticeably better than Jalen Smith. Smith, and this is just a side note, Smith lost track of the ball a bit more than Raglan did according to my charting, particularly against misdirection-based offenses like Georgia Tech. He had a lot of trouble reading the option. At times, he just straight up lost the ball and put himself and his team into bad situations. Raglan was much more reliable when it came to not falling for misdirection, uh, particularly in the championship game. He was flawless. And also putting himself in the right place at the right time to make a play. That being said, Smith made much, much better reads against pro-style offenses than against option offenses, so it's almost like he's more adept at reading the concepts he's going to see at the next level anyway. So it's not a huge deal to me. I just wanted to note that he did have multiple mental errors against run games with a bunch of different moving parts. Anyway, back to Raglan. He does a bunch of things well, but a two-down, run-thumping middle linebacker is a lot less valuable and a lot less scarce of a commodity than a freakishly athletic linebacker like Smith. That's why I think Smith is going to be a top 15 pick, health permitting, while Raglan, in my opinion, is probably going to go somewhere in the second round. I simply cannot justify to myself using a first round pick on a one dimensional player that isn't even a high upside defensive lineman. No NFL team has taken a linebacker like Raglan in the top 15 in the last several years, and I don't think it's going to happen this year either. All right, that's all I got for now. I think next I'm going to dive into some receivers or I might take a crack at some of the top defensive tackle prospects this year. Uh, there's a bunch of those. Feel free to like and subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know who you want the next video to be about. Until then, later.